I'm back with part two and I'm talking about does the church show hospitality and do they fulfill God's mission? So what I wanted to look at is we were looking at John 10 before and we'll go back to John 10 verses 25. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me? The proof is the work I do in the Father's name. But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my Father has given them to me. And he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Once again the people picked up the stones to kill him. Jesus said, At my Father's direction I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? For which one are you going to stone me? Is this very, does this sort of um, ring a bell? Does this ring a bell that if you've been in a church for a very long time, 20, 10, 20 years, would that the disfellowshipping of Christians be very similar to stoning? In other words, instead of stoning, um, they've come up with a better solution, and that is to, dis, um, to disfellowship Christians, to disfellowshipping Christians from churches. Is this another way of saying what the Pharisees, what the religious leaders were surround Jesus at the temple? Is this a way that the religious leaders in a church says, though you are not guilty of committing any serious sin, though you are not guilty of doing anything wrong, we just feel that this church is no good for you and we are going to disfellowshipping you from the church. I don't, I don't believe for one minute that is Christ-like or has anything to do with the mission or fulfilling the mission of God and showing the hospitality in churches. You wonder why the church is actually reducing in, in numbers then getting stronger in numbers because we are what I was saying before we must realize that we do not go away from what we know. We must be careful because in Hebrews, and I was saying this before, Hebrews, Hebrews 2, warning against drifting away. So we must listen very carefully to the truth. We have heard or we may drift away from it. For the message of God delivers us through the angels and always they stood the firm of every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So it makes us think we can escape or ignore this great salvation. What makes you think you can escape if we ignore the great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus Christ himself? That's in Hebrews 2. Verses, verses 3 and f verses 3. And so what makes you think you can escape and ignore? And getting back to this, once again people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, at my father's direction, I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? So which one, for which one are you going to stone me? Wouldn't that be very similar that somebody that wishes no malice, no bad intent, they come into a church, they are seeking God and they are seeking to understand. But somehow the leadership of a church says, no, we have this policy of disfellowshipping people from churches. And instead of stoning them or casting them out, we'll disfellowship them. But I don't believe for one minute that is Christ-like or what Christ commands us 
to do. So the Father loves me because I sacrifice my life so that he may take it back up again. No one can take my life from me. I sacrificed it voluntarily for I have the authority to lay it down and when I want to and also take it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. This is what Jesus was speaking. Jesus was speaking this in John ten seventeen. So how for one minute that we cannot show hospitality in a church. And I uh, just want to touch base on a few things. Fear of traditional churches are in decline as attendance dwindle. 30% over the past 10 years, while parishes numbers at a Catholic church have dropped by 19%. You know, we must fulfill God's mission. What's going on? The average age of people attending a Catholic or Anglican church is roughly 60. Roughly 60, with these churches failing to pull in younger parish parishioners and I see the decline in numbers to continue at least for the next 20 years. Well I don't think that in a sense that's good enough for God. Do not think it's good enough for God. Numbers fall sharply at Australian traditional churches. So we see that there is a decline but what are we doing? Pastors falling prey to leaders' hostility and environment, ministering to the Minister's Foundation Incorporate it does talk about these things. And it says many church conflicts result because pastors or congregation fail to communicate what is expected from another, said the guy at Futural Head of Kentucky Baptist Conventions, Minister's Church Support Division. Almost every congregation will say they want a strong leader. They want a good leader, said Futural. Futural, who counsels with churches in conflict. The problems are run into and have more to do with the style of leadership than in fact the leadership, he said. Futural recommended both pastors and congregations say before hiring what is expected of each other. Goats agreed that part of the problem is that pastors don't do their homework. In the leadership poll of 50%, the pastors forced to resign and so they did not ask their adequate questions about the church before accepting the job. What I'm trying to, what I'm seeing here is, and that was from Ministers and Ministers Foundation Incorporative, mtmfoundation.org, and what I'm seeing here is uh, this rapid decline. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, Christ is wanting us to fill a mission, and that is what I was saying before. That. If I go back to that, it says here, Matthew 28, 19, Go you, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. When jo John the Baptist, where's the John the Baptists today in this society? Where is today in Australia the John the Baptists? I don't think there is any. Because no one is willing to stand up and defend God. And it says to obey the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul at whatever cost. If we turn to Colossians 3, and what does Colossians 3 say? There's something that we really need to pray for is to break the silence, to break the chains of bondage, to break the silence, to change things around we know we're in the end times. We know we are in the end times. So we've all turned our Bibles to Colossians. So we go to Colossians, which is I'm just a bit lost, but anyway, with Colossians, we're talking about how we sh should, just give me a sec, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, here we go. Now with Colossians, Colossians 3, what Christians should do. Remember, this is the Word of God. 
this is the word of God and you know praise God that this is a sort of the spirit you know we put on the armor of God and we pray every day to put on the armor of God the breast the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness the the belt of truth the shoes of readiness the shield of faith the sword of the spirit we put this on every day why is it that churches argue about what the Bible says what Christ commands us isn't it futile that if we aren't doing what the Word of God says then what are we doing what is our mission what is our mission have we forgotten what the mission is do we need to come to Christ on our hands and knees and say God show us what the mission is again because we seem to be uh, falling away drifting away what Christians should do living in a new life your old self passes away when you accept Jesus Christ in your life and your new self is in Christ living the new life since you've been raised to a new life with Christ set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place and honors God's right hand think about the things of heaven not the things of the earth for you died to this life and you rule and your real life is hidden with Christ in God and when Christ who is your life is revealed to the whole world you will share in he in in all his glory so put to death the sinful earthly things of lurking within you have nothing to do with sexual immorality impurity lust and evil desires don't be greedy for the greedy person is an adultery worshipping the things of this world because of these sins the anger of God is coming you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world but now is the time to get rid of your anger rage and malice and behavior and slander and dirty language don't lie to each other for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds put on your new nature and be renewed and as you learn to know your Creator and become like him in this new life it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or Gentile circumcised or uncircumcised barbaric uncivilized slave or free Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us Christ lives in all of us so how do you have a policy church that says you can disfellowship people from your church when Christ lives in all of us have you not forgotten what the Bible says there is only one scripture and I'm not going to go into that scripture where that sometimes we need to hand over the Christian to the devil that he may be saved and his salvation may be saved but that is a drastic drastic thing to do when I come back with part three of this I want to look further into Colossians 3 and what Christians should do and this is what God is saying what we should do since God chose you to be the holy people he loves you must clothe yourself with tenderness mercy kindness humility gentleness and patience if you don't have any of these guess what you're going to have a policy of disfellowshipping people from a church because you do not have what God is saying we need to clothe ourselves with and that's tender-hearted mercy kindness humility and gentleness and patience then there is no need for disfellowshipping people we need to look towards Christ so we'll come back to part three just in a minute